Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video that I did with Tony Merwin where we unveil what it really takes to start recruiting for Medicare Advantage carriers in 2021. But before I get into that, guys, I got to talk to you about my favorite telemarketing lead company in the industry, and that is Lead Heroes. Guys, if you're not using Lead Heroes in your marketing attack in some form or fashion in 2021, you need to start. Lead Heroes has got you covered when it comes to Medicare supplement leads, final expense leads, turning 65 leads. They just got something for everybody. They're highly trained and experienced telemarketers. Take the guesswork out of it for you. They only match you with high quality, interested and qualified prospects for your pipeline. They just make your life a lot easier by getting you to talk to the right people. Guys, just because you watch this video today, Lead Heroes is going to give you 10% off all orders you make on their website. Head down to the description. There's a link to their website along with a coupon code. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy this video that I made with the one and only Tony Merwin. What's up, guys? Hey, this is Christian Brindle with Six Figure Medicare Agent. Hope this video finds you doing well. Um, I have an old friend here on the on the video here with me today. Um, I have Mr. Tony Merwin of Precision Senior Marketing. Um, probably of all of the people that I know that work for an organization like Precision, he's definitely the most active in the communities, most active on social media, and he's really done a great job of putting information out there that. So many people in a role like his don't do. Um, I love him to pieces and um, just got to spend some time with, with him the last in about two weeks ago in Memphis for the Medicare con. Uh, Tony, how are you this morning or afternoon, I should say? Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's still morning here. You know, it's only yeah. 11, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not that far ahead of you. Man, I'm doing great. Honestly, I am, I'm doing great. I'm coming off of a ton of uh, energy and steam uh, from that Memphis conference and just I feel like a locomotive train right now, to be honest with you. Things are happening. Things are doing great. And uh, I'm just ready to take all that energy and just keep pushing forward and, and keep building these teams. So I'm having a blast and I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, any, I mean, it's always a pleasure. And, um, and I love the studio, by the way. The studio Thank is you. looking very, very it's good. Very nice. um, it's very nice. Yeah. I mean, I've been, it's, it's been fun for me to see it develop the last you know, maybe six months or so as you kind of tweaked with it a little bit. And I, I think it's turned out very good. Um, yeah. We're getting and, really close to having a lot more content coming out. We've had some unfortunate delays primarily because um, our uh, technical guy that does all the video shooting and editing and puts out our social media stuff for us, unfortunately was in a really bad mountain biking accident uh, and has He's had to deal with surgery. He's basically getting disability right now, but we expect to see him back soon. He's recovering and feeling better. And pretty soon, you're going to see our channel uh, start dropping all kinds of great content. So look forward to it. Well, I'm excited about it and I'm looking forward to it. And um, I want to circle back and talk about that channel in a little bit here. But sure. um, but but this this is this is a video that you and I have talked about several times making. And I feel like it was one of those things that we both really wanted to do. And then, you know, we're both very busy people. So it gets pushed mm -hmm. into the background a little bit. Um, but the main thing that we were going to talk about was maybe some misconceptions on what it really takes for an agent to recruit for Medicare Advantage carriers. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of information out there about this. And a lot of it, you know, what I found isn't necessarily true, you know, for the most part. Um so I've, I've, I, and I kind of come from this in a little bit of an experience um, role several years ago before we had, you know, so much of our business and so much of our contracts with agent pipeline, we had our contracts split about 50, 50 with another FMO. I won't say their name, um, but they, they were telling us for years that with every Medicare advantage contract we had with them, that they would not, the, the carriers, they would specifically say the carriers would not grant a GA contract for those of you who don't know what that stands for general agent contract and be able to build a downline until an agent had five agents in their downline. So what they would do is they would bring on these agents. They would have them contract direct to the carrier. And then once you had five, they'd move you up to GA and move the five agents under you, which is what I, and what I've learned the last couple of years is that's a very normal thing in the industry for some reason, mm -hmm. but one thing that I've appreciated about you and I've appreciated about, you know, um, pipeline is, you know, organizations like 
yours and theirs, you know, they really don't um, hide that information from people. They will come out and say the real requirements on it. Um, what is the real requirements for someone to start recruiting with a Medicare Advantage carrier? Well, obviously, besides you being appointed, certified, and ready to sell yourself, um, if you want to recruit someone on a direct pay level, right, where they're getting directly paid from the company, uh, right. you're not having their commissions assigned to you. Um, you really you need to be at the GA level so that you can do that. And truthfully, you only have to have one ready to sell agent, period. And a lot of the carriers, actually, I will say all of the carriers that I work with, and I work with national brands, you know, it might differ a little bit when we get to some of the regional carriers like Devoted or Clover, Global Health or some of those. But as right. far as your big box brands, Humana, Aetna, United Healthcare, WellCare, et cetera, um, I can actually provide a GA contract to any agent that promises me that they have a ready to sell agent and they just need to get them on board it. But obviously we got to get them on board at first. Um, and you see, as I remember, gives them six months to fulfill that ready to sell agent requirement. Aetna, I believe, gives them a full year. And after that period, they have not uh, brought on board that ready to sell agent and got them going. They'll just bump them back down to the agent level. And then there's a short wait period before they're able to reapply to general agent level and try to get back to recruiting. Um, but generally speaking, is if you're a, you can be a GA, you could obtain the general agent level, one level above street, which for most MA carriers uh, is a $25 to $50 override whether it's replacement or new business, mm -hmm. uh, Aetna pays a little higher. Um, you just got to have one ready to sell agent. That's it. There's, yeah. there's some misnomers out there that you have to have five. Five is the benchmark. That's what they really consider a GA. You should have about five agents, but you're only required to have one to get that contract locked down. And then once you have it locked down, then you can continue to grow from there. Obviously work through duplicating that downline agent. And the next thing you know, you're qualifying for even the higher levels. And once you get past the GA mark, the benchmarks change a little bit by carrier, right? right? The, the, they start to get a little more diverse as far as how many agents they want you to have to get up to like an MGA level or an yeah. SGA level or even the very top FMO level. Um, but to get the GA or as Aetna calls it, LMO, <laughs> you need one RTS agent. That's it. So my question, my question for you is, you know, you as a competitor to so many of these other big recruiting organizations, right? From your perception, maybe from the outside looking in, or maybe even, you know, you have some inside scoop on it. Why do they come out and make it sound like it's a carrier requirement? Why don't they just say, this is our requirement? Why do they say this is Humana's requirement or UHC's requirement? How do I say this delicately? <laughs> um, to take the pressure off themselves, I can only assume, you know, um, because if they say, I mean, ultimately, if they say, if they say it's their requirement, hey, we require you to have five agents, and that agent only has two or three, right? And he's trying to grow, and he's trying to make a living and scale his business. He's going to go somewhere else and find someone that will just run by the carrier requirements and do. Okay, cool. You got two agents. No problem. We can get you GA level and get things moving along for you. No problem at all. Uh, so I can only assume it's, it would be to take pressure off themselves to try to prevent that agent from going somewhere else and shopping that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I I've, I've heard the argument for the five agent being a good thing. And I mean, I, I can, I can understand where they're coming from, right? Because if, if it's a, maybe let's paint a picture maybe there's a brand new agent they've been selling for a year, they have 80 to hundred clients, that person, you know, for them to start recruiting, and this isn't necessarily a blanket statement, but they probably would be better off just to continue to sell. Maybe they don't know enough yet to recruit, yeah. maybe depending on the person. Right. Um, so I understand the argument of, you know, Hey, get five. And if you can prove that you can get five, then you're ready to be a trainer, to be a recruiter. I understand that argument. And I think there's a place for it. My, my thing has always been, I feel like the, I, I I've almost, I've almost felt like there's been some dishonesty about it, you know, to where I would respect a company more if they came out and said, this is how, this is our philosophy. You know, this is how we do things here at our organization um, it's our, it's a requirement that we have. This is why I think most people would understand that. Um, but instead they kind of 
keep it hidden behind a curtain a little bit and maybe, you know, point fingers at carriers and things like that. I don't know. I've always just kind of not been a huge fan of that maybe non-transparency. Agreed. Agreed. You know, and that's, we talked about this at the Memphis conference um, yeah. about how th this industry for the past couple of decades, I mean, I've been in it 17 years and this definitely holds mm -hmm. water has been a very restrictive industry in regards to information and transparency. Um, in the last three years, I've noticed a wave of change that's happening in the industry where everybody realizes, hey, number one, we don't have enough agents to serve our Medicare market truthfully. We really don't. With the right. number of people that are turning 65, it's just ridiculous. There's enough pie for all of us to go get everything that we want to achieve and dream in this business. And you have things like, I mean, that meant for the conference was mind blowing to me. Right. Because yeah, it was too. so transparent with the information that people were throwing out about what helps them succeed. Like, I mean, Eric Fierro threw up his verbatim Facebook ads. Yeah. These are the Facebook ads I'm using that are killing it. These are the price points you're going to get. This is how you want to do it. Justin yeah. Brock went through his entire Brock and mortar structure. This is how you build an awesome Brock and mortar. Right. Uh, Josh Lustig dropped his whole pitch. This yeah. is exactly how I present to people. And it's why I'm selling yeah. over 100 med subs a, week, a month. And, you know, you could see people just feverishly writing and taking photos of the slides because yeah. they knew that the information there was so valuable and it made that conference just phenomenal. And I'm, I'm so pumped that this new wave is kind of changing things. Right. Yeah. Um, for but sure. doesn't mean everybody's going to play on that same level. There's still going to be people out there restricting information, holding things, you know, behind a, a veil, so to speak. It is what it is. That's and that's not just true in insurance. That's true in all kinds of sales arenas, you know, MLMs, whatever you want to look at. That happens, you know. Um, yeah. With what you said in regards to the five agent argument, and that you understand that, I kind of disagree with that, and okay. I disagree with that mainly because I have seen too much proof of two and three and four man agent teams right? Where they have a GA as their leader and he's taking care of his little group of guys. And there's only two or three of them go out, and absolutely light it on fire and write more business than a 10 agent team's doing. Yeah. So 100%. by restricting that leader back by not allowing him to earn an override to help scale his business and help help more agents, you're, it's really not conducive to the growth of the market as a whole, right? Yeah. You want, we want to set it up for an agent to grow. And one of the ways you do that is you let him become a GA as fast as possible so that he can start duplicating himself. Even if the dude is not probably doesn't necessarily have what it takes yet to start recruiting, give him the opportunity at least, right? And yeah. let him help yeah. grow the market and grow his business because that's what's going to help him serve more customers. If we hold him back and restrict him and say, no, 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 he'll never get to the GA level. <laughs> yeah. Right. If he's stuck at street and he can't get one person underneath there, he has to wait until he gets five, which means he has to convince five guys at the same time to get on board with them. Probably as LOAs, because he doesn't have anything else to recruit him to and then convert them once he gets bumped up. That's, that's a big pain in the neck. It's a bunch of paperwork problems for everybody, for the upline, for the agents uh, and for the carrier to have to sit there and process all that extra paperwork. Just go ahead and give the dude the GA contract. If he doesn't prove it in the time period allotted, then we'll just move him back down. Yeah. I think that's, I, I, in my opinion, that's the best way to do it. I think that's a great point too. And I, I feel like the other thing too, is I always look at an upline with an agent as in their, their job for that agent is to help them grow their business in whatever model they want it to look like, right? Their, their, their job is to help that agent grow their business in whatever vision that agent has for their business. And everybody's going to have a different vision and idea for what they want their business to turn into. I feel like, I, I agree with everything you just said there. I feel like if, if an agent wants to recruit, you know, whether the upline thinks they should or not, it's not the upline's place to say, oh, you can't do that. You know, you're a loser. You can't recruit. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you know, call us in a year and we'll give you the authority to recruit. No, if I think I'm ready, then that's on me. Right. Everybody has their own personal definition of success and so forth. And it's, it's not up to any FMO or IMO to in a non-captive environment. I'll yeah. right. Take a captive environment where they have a certain training program. And then obviously they have benchmarks built into that career shop on when you become a team leader and so forth. That's 
hundred percent acceptable and makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Cause it's a regimented training program, but as an independent broker where you are on your own, you're on your own devices to get yourself out of bed in the morning to run your own business. You're responsible for your own marketing, blah, blah, blah. That guy, we should not hold him back. We should not prevent him by saying, well, no, you're not ready to recruit. You know, we, we're not, you obviously don't know enough. You only wrote, you know, a hundred apps last year. That's not enough. No, nah, that's garbage. Give yeah. the dude the chance to fall on his face. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and a lot of the times, chance to prove himself. Yeah, hundred percent. Because at the end of the day, like how many agents, Tony, have you worked with over the years that have maybe come on and like maybe you might have a preconceived notion that said, I don't know if this person has what it takes, and then they come in and kill it. Like sometimes you just don't know who's going to do what. Hundred percent, and it's funny. You know, as a uh, as a marketer, broker, recruiter now for the last 11 years in wholesale, I've talked to thousands of agents, literally thousands. And like any other sales business, and we all know this because there's a whole conference built around it, 8% of the people out there lead the industry. The other 92% do okay, maybe, and unfortunately, sometimes even fail. Mm -hmm. um, there is occasionally that agent, and it's usually the quiet ones that don't tout how great they are. Oh, I'm going to come in and kill this industry and blah, blah, yeah. blah. It's usually the ones like, hey, um, I have a marketing plan in place. Uh, these are the things I need. I just need some guidance in the Medicare space. It's new to me, blah, blah. You know, can is partnering with you the right idea? And we realize maybe it is. And there's one agent that comes to mind who's an older guy, he comes from real estate, but really savvy marketer that I work with. Uh, or he is a really savvy marketer. And I do work with him now as an agent in the Medicare space. Um, he went out for his first year, proved his marketing system and writing three or four apps a day based on his marketing system and Medicare supplement and Medicare advantage. And then came to me as like, okay, I've proven that this works. Now I want to start recruiting and grow my, my agency. I'm like, oh, no problem. You know, he didn't have an agent yet. I put in the bumps for him, got him the GA level. And now he's already got seven agents. Uh, and he's already calling me going, Hey, uh, buckle your seatbelt. Cause I'll be at 10 and 15 here pretty soon. So get your new paperwork ready for me. But I mean, he's crushing it and he's just got an awesome system. But had I told him, no, you have to go, you know, you have to go figure it out at agent level and figure out how to recruit someone at agent level with no overrides. Yeah. Where would he be? He'd be shopping for another FMO. Yeah. Definitely. I would be restricting him. Right. So instead I'm like, no problem, dude, you're doing a great job. Let's give you the opportunity to recruit now because you want to do it. And obviously you're proving it. And the dude's lights out, killing it, killing it. Yeah. He's, yeah. Like, and it blows my mind because he went from nobody in the industry two years later, right? He's already written over 400 apps himself on his whew, own pen, well awesome. over. And then now he's duplicating himself through an agent base in his marketing system. Uh, and he's basically become one of my number one direct producers that fast, just because he, he understood how to be a business owner right up front. And he knew a really good marketing system. He just had the test to see if it really worked in Medicare. Lo and behold, it did. Wow. I mean, and if you, if you had taken the approach to say, you know, well, no, you need five agents or whatever the case might be, like where would, what <laughs> right. would happen there? You know, yeah, like, he'd be struggling because now he's not making the extra spread for the agents that he's providing all of his marketing to because he's paying for everything, right? Period. So he wouldn't have had that extra money to help grow it at the rate that he's growing it now. And maybe he would have made it to one agent, maybe two, but now he's already sitting on seven. They're producing business themselves. Like it's, it's, it's one of the best perfections of duplication I've seen in a long time, but yeah. I couldn't, you know, who am I to say, no, you're not ready. Yeah. Even yeah, I know you sure. wrote 400 apps. Good for you, but you're not ready to recruit yet. I can't, you know, <laughs> you until know, you five get agents. No, I'm like, here's the, here's the real deal. You need one agent and I can give you a head start, and you have to go get your one agent. If you don't do it in this time, they'll move you back down. No problem. He went out and got seven pretty quick. It's, it's so funny that you mentioned like, you know, about that story that, that, cause it, it brings me back to that, the, the other FMO I mentioned at the beginning of the video where, you know, they were telling us you need five. And the reason why we found out you didn't need five is the other FMO agent pipeline that we're with was whispering in our ear, be like, that's not true, you know, and obviously they ended up winning out in the end um, because they were honest with us. Of course. But, 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 you know, I remember when I was first starting to recruit agents, it was probably about two years ago. Um, they gave us the whole five agent spiel. Well, you know, I got about two and then I found out I didn't really need the five and so I went back to them 
And they were, and they, you know, basically their approach was like, they're like, well, we'll make an exception for you. We'll give, we'll give it to you with two. That was their answer. And I was like, wait a minute, you're making an exception for me. I thought it wasn't possible without five. Right. You're making an exception. I'm like, so this is a you thing. I not thought a it carrier was the carrier thing. requirement. I, yeah. But now you have the authority to tell the carrier to make an exception. <laughs> yeah. Like I, so I, I, I very much, you know, called them on it and they were just like, <laughs> they were just like, well, you do need five, but we can do like, they just kept, you know, flipping my question away, you know? And, um, yeah, yeah. and right there, I just found out, you know, and, and we, we were, and we ended up seeing some other things with this carrier too. Like we found out they were going out from under us to try to recruit agents for contracts. We didn't have with them. They would send direct mm-hmm. emails to them. They were taking some of our agents and putting them under other hierarchies and thinking we wouldn't notice like just real, real slimy stuff. Mm-hmm. But I, I almost feel like if you find out that the FMO isn't being honest with you in that capacity, it opens up the, the, the floodgates to be like, okay, what else are they not being truthful with me about? Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, if, if, they're, if, they're, if they're being dishonest or, or non-transparent on this deal, what else are they lying to me about? What else are they holding back on? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I can appreciate that. So um, another thing I wanted to, to ask you about is, is – what, what, cause, cause I, I, I'm sure that you get this question all the time. I, there are so many agents I'll talk to where, you know, they're trying to make it to that GA level. And they're like, I've got mm-hmm. three agents. I'm almost there, you know, and their, their FMO told them that it was five or something like that. Do you feel like it's more an agent that is a GA themselves that doesn't wants to keep someone down at street level? Maybe like, let's say I'll, I'll paint a picture for you. Let's say there's a GA, they have three agents, right? They're doing very, a lot of business. They have an agent under them. That's a superstar. That agent wants to start recruiting. We all know a GA can't be under a GA, right? So if this agent above them has three, they can't move up to MGA for the mo- for, for with probably a, a majority of carriers. Right. Um, because that is an absolute requirement. To get to that yeah. level, every carrier has a s- solid requirement. Right, right. So do you feel like it's more of, you know, they put that five agent requirement to keep agents from achieving GA status so they can stay under a GA? Or do you think it's more FMOs out there that are actually painting that picture? What, what, what do you feel like? I would the narrative say it's probably, I would really say it's probably a mix of both. Um, I know of at least one instance right now uh, that an agent that I'm working with and trying to help uh, is at GA level and can't move up because the person in front of her can't move up. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah for so she's, sure. she's held back by no fault of her own, even though she's technically outgrown the position with her number of RTS agents, she can't move up because she's stuck under someone that's, they can't move up to the next level themselves because they haven't met that next SGA or FMO type requirement. Um, and, and she is shopping possibly to transfer, you know, we'll find out how it works, but so I know that's at least happening in one instance for a fact. If it's happening there, it's probably happening in other instances. And then to further that, I would think more of it is probably on the FMO side where they have their own internal, we want five agents to get you a GA. And I don't think it's necessarily that they're trying to suppress someone, even though that's what ends up happening. I don't think their goal is like, we have to hold people back. Get the <laughs> yeah. thumb on them. I don't think that's their thought. I think the thought is like, look, if we're going to give it a GA contract, we want it to have some integrity. It needs five people, period. You know, and that's what a GA is. I get it. It's a great benchmark. But at some point, again, you have to lend out a little rope to some of these agents that have the opportunity. And again, you're either going to let them hang themselves or you're going to give them an opportunity where they can really grow and prove their ground. There's some there's a lot of guys that I've given GA contracts to that have done absolutely squat with them. Never recruit a single soul. You know, and they come back, they get bumped back down. No harm, no foul. Mm-hmm. Right. Nobody's actually losing money in that transaction. Because unless you are set up as a corp, um, an independent agent at GA level doesn't make the extra money on his own business, right? He only gets right. what CMS allows him to get, full market value. So you, you as the FMO aren't losing any money necessarily to go ahead and extend someone a GA contract to give them an opportunity to recruit. Um, you're what, and again, all you're doing is you're allowing someone the opportunity to grow. So I've certainly had several agents that have failed at it for whatever reason, and and I think sometimes the agent thought they were going to get more money by being a GA, even though you're really not until you start recruiting and improving that. Um, and then I've had other agents that I've taken a risk on and be like, I right, here's, you know, go. And they've come like the guy I was just talking about and they've come out like gangbusters and they kill it. 
Yeah. It's you know, I'd rather I'd rather give someone the benefit of the doubt and give them a little opportunity than prevent opportunity. There, there's my a, philosophy. There, there's an office that comes to mind here in Utah. And it's an agent, mm-hmm. right? Very good producing agent. He's been in the business for probably 15, 20 years. And his his uh, secretary is licensed. She'll write apps from she start, she's began to write apps, has two other agents in his office, and they're both very good producers, right? They're they're not like maybe number one, number two producers in the market, but they're 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 very, very good producers. Like we see them on the leaderboards for Medicare Advantage Carriers, things like that. But he has four. And um, you know, when I when I first talked to him and he 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 was like, I'm looking for that one last agent so I can you know get to the five and start making override. And he had been looking for that last agent for two or three years. They're probably oh doing goodness. six to eight hundred Medicare Advantage apps in that office a year, at least, maybe a thousand for all I know. And um, you know, we we told them that <laughs> hey, we got some news for you, you know, <laughs> and um it was just crazy for me to see it because, you know, they, they ended up sticking it out with the FMO because they were so close. They had some, you know, I guess other arrangements, but I remember them, they were very upset because this had been like mm-hmm. a five-year plan that they were um, on the track with. And he was pretty pissed because of all the overrides he left on the table the last four years up until yeah, no kidding, man. Yeah, It adds up. Especially if that volume that you're, if you're writing a thousand apps a year and you're missing out, let's just say $25 an app, uh, that's $25,000 a year in yeah. annual monies. It's I crazy. Mean, it's crazy. Um, well, I'm, I'm really glad we got to, had a chance to be able to talk about this. I mean, I feel yeah. like it's something that needs to be out there. I've never seen another person put this out there publicly. Um, and so I was like, you know, when, 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 when we talked about it and you had, you know, brought up the idea of doing it, I was like all about it. Cause I love to stir the pot a little bit. Um, Tony, talk about, talk about the Tony Merwin brand, talk about the Tony Merwin YouTube channel. Where can people find you if they just appreciate your transparency, they appreciate all your knowledge about the industry and, and just everything that agents need to know about being successful. Where can they find you? What's the best place? I would honestly, probably the easiest place to find me is on Facebook. I'm super active on Facebook. You can look up Tony Merwin. I'm right there. Easy to find. Um, And you can certainly call me in my home office or at the office here, 800-998-7715. Just press zero and ask for Tony. I'm the only Tony here. Um, But if you want to look me up quick, just go to Facebook, type in my name. You'll find me right there at the top. I do also have a professional page on Facebook, which is I'm actually learning is pretty much useless. Uh, cause I was originally going to migrate all my news aggregation there. But then when I realized, even if I have a thousand followers on that page, they hardly ever see it just right. to keep it on the personal page. So I'm, I'm back to that. But, uh, uh, the YouTube channel that I currently have in my name is, it was more of a practice channel to get ready for what's about to launch with PSM. Um, look for it. It'll be called the PSM experience. It is not launched yet. We are building a bank of raw video now that when Shannon gets back in, he'll start cutting and editing and it'll, we're going to drop out a whole bunch. Uh, and then the big part that I'm really looking forward to uh, as I'm getting prepared for is we are going to do basically a weekly news show. So if you think of my, if you, I know you follow me on Facebook. So all that news stuff that I aggregate on a regular basis, we're going to weekly take some of the highlighted or best articles that are, affect our industry, whether it be current events, legislation changes, just general Medicare info, product changes, whatever, anything that an agent could make use of to kind of keep themselves well informed of how the industry is evolving. Uh, we're going to aggregate all that into a very short uh, weekly news show called the, the, the PSM update, basically. So super pumped about that one. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and we're hoping to get that underway here pretty much as soon as Shannon gets in. Up, it, It's hard because I can't really write content for that one until Shannon's ready and he's back right. healthy in the office because otherwise it's just three months of old news. <laughs> right. So right. I have to keep it changes so that fast. Right. That one's got to stay fresh. So, uh, cause I've written out a couple of episodes already. I'm like, well, that's already old news. That one's got to go away. Um, so basically I've just been doing, uh, content for our, our website primarily. Uh, so we're going to have videos added to all of our most popular blogs, all of our most popular foundational pages on our website. That video has been getting shot and we're just waiting for him to come edit it, throw it on the, on the site. Uh, and then on the YouTube channel, and then second will be the uh, the new show, which will be awesome. Well, I'm I'm excited to see it. I mean, I really am because you know 
for anybody that's gotten to spend some time around Tony, right? Whether it be virtually like something like this, or even in person, every time I talk to Tony, you know, I've known Tony now, what a year, year and a half, something like that. And, um, every time we have a conversation, I feel like I learned something I didn't know before. It's just, you're, you're, you're a wealth of knowledge and, um, and a good friend, you know, and I really appreciate you, um, taking the time to come on here. Cause this was something I didn't want to put out there all by my lonesome and put a target on yeah, my back. He needs somebody to blame it on. But yeah. Tony did it. It's all his fault. The Tony's idea <laughs> had nothing to do with it. I'm just the mouth. Tony wanted yeah. to come on here and, and change the world. But, Whatever. but, 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 but in all seriousness, thank you for coming on. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And um, if you're not following Tony on social media, on Facebook, if you're not connected with him, he shares some unbelievable content, some unbelievable information daily. Um, and he just does a great job and he's just, he's just a resource for the industry. So um, make sure that you're connected with Tony if you're not already. Cool. Likewise for you. Of course, they already know that because they're watching your show if they're seeing this. But uh, yeah, dude, your Feed the Beast uh, topic that you covered in Memphis was lights out. I heard so many people were just like, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. what great content he was giving about his ability to put out content. Um, so kudos to you for that. It was awesome to get to hear you speak and to see how, and you did a really good job. Like I Thank heard you, you were recently talking about it on one of your other episodes. You're like, I don't know if it was any good. Hope people got some value. There was tons of value. You laid it out flat. It was an awesome presentation. So you're really good at that. Well, thank, well, thank surprising. you. Surprising, you've had a ton of practice of opening your mouth. So <laughs> yeah, you do a you well, do a great job at it. Well, thanks, Tony. I appreciate that. And you know, you were you were an amazing MC, by the way, as well. I mean, you you kept everything moving on and and on schedule and and you know when when it was time for you to get up and speak, you were funny, you were entertaining, you were insightful. So you did a great job too. So muchas um, gracias. Look, I mean, you know, it, I I I feel like people are going to be able to see you emceeing a lot of events going forward. So, you know, if you're going to any conferences coming up this year, watch for Tony, he's going to be on stage a lot as he should be. Yeah. I scored a gig while I was there doing that one, you know, so I'll be doing the, uh, the agency mastermind in Vegas coming up in May. Uh, So you'll definitely see me there. Um, I'll be at the SWAT event in April. If anybody's not going to SWAT, check that event out. And not, you know, just to plug this event, it's such an awesome event. I've been to a lot of events, a lot of trainings, especially in my 30 years in sales and marketing. I've never been to an event like this. It's not hype. I mean, there's some fun and some inspiration in it. We're going to have Coach Michael Burt there. Cody Askins will be there talking. So there's obviously going to be a lot of that. But the information when it gets down to training time is 100% no lie a mind shift, 100%. Once you finish that training, you will never look at people or life and your business the same way again. And it won't be in a bad way. It'll be in a very positive light. If you get a chance to go to SWAT in Dallas, it's coming up at the end of April. Go, I'll be in the front row. Hey, well, it sounds, it sounds, it sounds like a killer event from everything I've heard about it. I mean, one thing I can say guys is after coming back from Medicare con, that was my first like event event, like of that magnitude. And I, I would, I would encourage you guys to get to every event that you can, you know, I'd be, I'd go to that. I'd go to 8%. I'd go to Medicare con next year. I would make sure that you're hitting all these events possible because you can't really put into words what you're going to walk away from until yeah. you experience it. You know, words are just one thing, but actually being there and being around big time people like Tony, like Cody, like Justin, just everybody in the industry, that's just making a difference and pushing it forward. Um, it's, it's, it was an unbelievable experience for me. So get to that event, get to other events. And um, I'm sure I'll see a lot of you guys at some of them. It's um, very well said. Cause I mean, I can honestly say this, that for eight years, I basically hid behind my telephone and ran my business and did a fine job at it. But at some point I was like, you know, what's uh, something else. There needs to be a little, some, something else going on here. I started seeing my competitors getting out there and doing events and, and so forth. I'm like, all right, I got to get out there and start doing some of this. And as soon as I did, the first one was 8% nation um, in 2019. Since then, I promise you, hands down, my business has doubled over just from going to events, meeting people, building relationships and providing value. That's crazy. Doubled my business That's over crazy. In two years <laughs> just from starting to go to events. That's awesome. So that's, that's get yourself awesome. to advance. Take his advice. Yes. <laughs> well, 
Tony, thank you again for coming on. Um, again, guys, connect with Tony if you're not already. And um, we're going to have him on. Um, I, I know we'll have him on several times going forward in the future. So thanks for your time, Tony. Really appreciate yeah. it. And um, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, we'll be back with more episodes of Six Figure Medicare Agent. Don't miss them out. And we'll see you next time.